I rerun. All right. Do you want to pray here? I'm just start all over. Yeah. Oh dear Jesus, thank you, Lord. We love you and we honor you and we praise you, God. Thank you, pray Jesus. Pray you be with us in this Bible study and help us to glean what we need to know, Lord Jesus. God, we need to know that we can Jesus trust name. you and that we love you and we want to be with you. And we praise you and give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Last week, we um, ended our study in Daniel chapter 11 at verse 37. And when we had read in that verse that neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, I had expressed that I believed that, that the Antichrist would be a Jew. Uh, and I, when I said that, I sensed a wondering uh, or questioning mm -hmm. whether the Antichrist would be a Jew. And so I thought that we, I should explain why I believe him to be a Jew. Oh, first of all, in verse 30 of Daniel 11, it says in here that he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant so shall he do he shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant there's a few things in there when it, it says and return and it says it again he shall even return i believe that would be to the land of israel i know that he's going to plant his tabernacle there, that that will be his dwelling place and his palace will be there. Uh, the other thing is, is that it uses that word um, uh, intelligence, have intelligence. That word is only used one time in the Bible and it's here in this verse. And that means to separate mentally and when it says that he shall have or would have indignation against the holy covenant i looked up that word indignation and that meaning or definition is to foam at the mouth or to be enraged and when it refers to the holy covenant i believe that to refer to the Law of Moses, the Old Testament, and the New Testament. So, I, I see bits and pieces there, but I also want to look at how, uh, when Jesus came on the scene and began his ministry, how the people did uh, give him scrutiny and examine whether he was the Christ or the Messiah, the anointed one. And, and if I look in the Gospel of John, in the first chapter, John 1, 11, it says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. If I rephrase this, I could say, He was a Jew, because he came to his mm -hmm. own, and the Jews rejected him. And if you go a little bit farther in this John chapter 1 and look at verses 45 to 49, it says, Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. 46, and Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. 47, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. And 48, Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, 
when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. And 49, Nathanael answered and said, saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, the King of Israel. I hope you can see that in verse 46, Nathanael is saying, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Because he knows the scriptures. He knows where Jesus or the Christ should come. And so, but he changed his mind when he got to verse 49 and said, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. So there he sees Jesus is that anointed one. Going a little bit farther in John chapter 5 and looking at verse 43, it says, I am come in my Father's name. And you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. In this passage, I do believe that he's talking about that another come in his own name is the Antichrist. Him you will receive. And Jesus clearly said he was come in his Father's name. The scripture agrees with that. I can look in Hebrews chapter 1 and it, see that it says uh, that he inherited his name. I can look in Philippians and see that he was highly exalted. That's in chapter 2, about verse 9, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. I see also in Ephesians, probably about verse 3, 14, it says that Paul wrote, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. That's in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. So um, I can go a little bit further into John chapter 7 because there was a dispute among some of them. Uh, John chapter 7 verse 40 to 43 says many of the people therefore when they heard this saying said of a truth this is the prophet and 41 others said this is the Christ but some said shall Christ come out of Galilee there's a difference there they're disputing 42 have not the scripture said that Christ comes of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was. And 43, so there was a division among the people because of this. Uh, so they are in this passage are pointing out, have not the scripture said. And so I know that they are examining Old Testament verses there's many of them that refer to Jesus. Psalms 132 verse 11 says, The Lord has sworn in truth unto David. He will not return from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. Jeremiah 23 and verse 5, Behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Those two verses that I gave you confirm that with David, you can look in um, the Chronicles, the Kings, the um, places where it talks about David, he says, here I sit in a, a house uh, with uh, cedar beams. And, and he says, and the Lord is dwelling in a tabernacle. And I want to build him a house. And the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, go tell David, I'm going to build him a house. And then I will sit from a seed that will descend from him and have him to sit on his throne that it would be an everlasting kingdom. And so we look for those things, that Jesus, the Christ, 
the Messiah must come from the descendants of David. The other thing is that Micah chapter 5 and verse 2 says, But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been of old from everlasting. Uh, it just stops there, but I want you to know that Bethlehem was the place where Jesus was born, and that was the place where it was prophesied that the Messiah would come from. And so when the wise men appeared and came before Herod in Matthew chapter 2, they inquired, where should Christ be born? It, it says, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Herod inquired of the chief priests and scribes and asked them where the Christ should be born. And the priests and scribes quoted Micah, saying, Bethlehem of Judea. And we find that in both Matthew chapter 1 and in the chapter 3 of Luke, that those both give the genealogy of Jesus. And they perfectly, both of them, uh, show that he is of David's descendants. Not only that, that they confirm also that he was born in Bethlehem. And so those things convinced me, um, reading those things. Um, John chapter 7, in that same passage a little bit farther down, uh, Nicodemus was questioning them that they should hear him and know what he does. And But verse 52, they answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look. For out of Galilee arises no prophet. So even though he was doing many wonderful things, they rejected him because they um, assumed that he was born in Nazareth, but he was not. Um, is Nazareth in Galilee? In the country it is. of Galilee? Yes, it okay, is. That's, that's... Galilee okay. is a region. Yes. Now there is... A sea of Galilee. Yeah. But Nazareth is more in the hill country. If you look on a map, one of those Bible maps, mm -hmm. you will find it on the western, toward southwestern, uh, in the hill country. Not mm -hmm. too far from that lake, but not yeah. on the right. lake shore. Not like you'd find Capernaum or mm -hmm. one of those others. Um, multiple times... People came to Jesus seeking healing, and they would cry out very loudly, saying, Son of David, have mercy. I, I have them written down, and I just don't want to overload you. You can do a search yeah. of all the different times that people came or that it said, Son of David. Um, there was so many, and every time they were calling out, Son of David, tells me that they recognized him as that anointed one, they see him as David's descendant. Um, when you look at, at John chapter 12, and this is uh, when he came into Jerusalem riding on the donkey. Uh, verse 13, they took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna. Blessed is the king of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. That tells me that they are proclaiming that he is that anointed one. I can look in Matthew 21 and verse 9 and see, it says, And the multitudes that went before and that followed, crying, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So that too confirms to me. All these verses prove to me that Jesus was that anointed one. The Messiah. The yeah. Christ. And in my mind, <coughs> if 
the Jews examined Jesus so closely as to whether he was the Christ or the anointed one, in my mind, they would give the same amount of scrutiny to the Antichrist to see if he fulfills the scriptures also. Uh, I, um, I watched a video on, on YouTube uh, by End Time Ministries and Doug Norvell was on there and he was talking about the red heifer. And they're getting ready to sacrifice that red heifer. Do you know how much scrutiny is given to those red heifers? They go over them almost with a magnifying glass. Maybe they do use magnifying glasses. Those red heifers cannot have one white hair on them. And all this program, it said that they found uh, a priest. Uh, he's a young man. And they also have given him the same amount of scrutiny or examination that they have given to the red heifers. In other words, he fulfills it. He's blameless. He's not touched any dead body in all his life. I mean, they're really examining him very closely closely to see if he is worthy to do the sacrifice. So that remains to be seen there. That has not been completely um, done, or as far as I know, it has not yet. Well, that's what the heifers are for, is to cleanse the priest. Yes, but they want him, the priest. You know, you could say, I'm a... They want the priest, the one to be perfect, to the sacrifice as a heifer. That's right. Well, I thought the heifer had to be sacrificed to cleanse the priest. Well, here's the thing. You cannot have a blemished record right. in any way. So if you have not been living a holy and separated life as the priests were called to do, you would be disqualified, even though you could say, I'm of the descendants of of Aaron or mm -hmm. Levi, I, I pertain to that tribe. Not everybody qualifies. Mm -hmm. You could have done something that would disqualify you. Yeah. You have a thought? Well, doesn't the Bible say that the, the red heifer is to, uh, oh, sorry, why did it do that? Uh, it's to, uh, What's the word? Uh, the the temple. Consecrated, sanctified. Uh, sanctified. Uh, what is what is I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're watching, I want you to realize that this Bible study is for one hour and that there is a part two. And you may not see it because YouTube mixes things up. So mm -hmm. I want to encourage you to hit the Aid a Believer sign and pull up videos. And you mm -hmm. should find part two there on that video. Yeah. Okay. I think it's time to go. Yeah.